Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020. The full game is now released and we are starting our first proper save. Now, some of you might have been expecting me to be starting a save with Southport, which is still the plan. But I haven't really played the full game since getting sacked from Bournemouth at the end of the beta. Literally at the end of the beta. So we're going to try a different team in the Premier League in the full game and see how well it goes. So we are here then at Everton. We have been appointed as the new manager of the Toffees, who are in real life, I think, are they technically underperforming? I'm not quite sure. I don't really keep an eye on too much about what's going on other than with my own team, which is Southampton, who are also underperforming. So yeah, let's hope that we can do better than, is it Marco Silva? I, this is how little I know about Everton. Hopefully we can do all right this season. Bill Kenwright, the chairman, then is giving us a lovely little introduction to the club. Every, we know about Everton. I mean, I clearly don't, but everyone else probably knows. We play at Goodison Park. I know one of the board's objectives is to build a new stadium, which is obviously kind of what they want to do in real life. There is no stadium being built. They just want to build a new stadium. So I'm assuming at some point in the next one, two, three, four, five years, however many years, a new stadium will be getting built for Everton. Our best 11 then. So Pickford in goal. Dinya, I st this is a bad team to be. He's going to be called Lucas because I could not say his surname at all. Yeri Mina, Michael Keane and Sidibe, whoever he is, Digital Sidibe. Delphin Gomez in the middle, Bernard, Sigurdsson, Iwobi and Rashalison as the front. So here we are then, five year plan. So they want to play an entertaining football. That is it. That is good because I think that's part of my problem I'm having with a lot of these club cultures and things like that is... They expect me to play entertaining football, score a lot of goals, play possession football, do X, Y, Z, do this, that and the other. And I'm incapable of doing everything. I can play one, I can play entertaining football and probably lose every game if you're okay with that. Or I can play possession football or long ball football and win every game, but I can't play a combination of the two. Five year plan, as I've mentioned, they want to build a new stadium, which is important, it is required. I mean, that's not really up to us, is it? Uh, work within the wage budget as well, which every team seems to have. Then, current season, top half finish. We failed with Bournemouth with that one, so hopefully we are going to be okay with Everton. FA Cup, fifth round minimum, and then they couldn't care less about the Carabao Cup. And then next season, they want to become best of the rest. That's going to be tough, assuming we're still in charge at the end of the season. We are going to fly through the start of the save. We're going to try and get to the beginning of the season as quick as possible. Episode 1 probably won't be anything from the start of the season. What I'm going to try and do... And it might not work, it might work, I don't know at the moment, but what I'm going to try and do is do short episodes, sort of 10, 12 minute long. So they're probably only going to be one match per episode, but they might be more frequent, things like that. Anyway, this is episode one. If I keep rambling on, it's going to be a 25 minute long episode. What's important when you join every club in a football manager save is finding out how much money you've got to spend. And Everton have, it's not a lot, £10 million. We do, however, we do have a lot of, if I'm perfectly honest, dead wood. We've got a lot of players here. If we sort by value, we've got a lot of players who are getting uh, worth a lot of money. And then sort by wage, we have some players who are getting paid extortionate amounts of money. Um, so we're going to try and shift some of these on to try and increase our wage budget. I've got one transfer target in mind, and I know for certain I'm going to overpay for him. But we're going to do it anyway, because I've always wanted to use him in a football manager game. And I think Everton could be the team to use him with. Unless, you know, we actually be the team that he plays for. Erling, it's not Erling Haaland, don't worry, I'm not buying Erling Haaland. If you're interested in the tactics that I'm going to be using, I, I don't know, I'm not quite sure yet, it might be Tiki Taka. We might be going Tiki Taka, we might be going control possession. The formation, I know what we want to do, it, it's that, that's the formation. Although if we go Tiki Taka, they recommend that. We, we've got wingers, we've got wingers, we're going to use wingers. We're going to go with that one, that one, that's the one. I'm an idiot, yeah, it's, it's this definitely this one. Also, I don't know why... This role is unknown, and that role is unknown, and that role is unknown. It makes no sense to me. We are now on to the 3rd of July, and some transfer business has happened. Nothing massive. No one massive has come in anyway. We've got rid of five players so far. Two of them on permanent deals, three of them going out on loan. The first one leaving on a permanent deal is Martin Stecklenburg. He is signed for Al Ali in uh, is that Saudi Arabia, I believe. He's gone for £1.2 million. Basically, he's our third choice goalkeeper, getting paid too much money, so he's off. And something that we really needed to do was get rid of Tosin. He has left, he has signed for Crystal Palace for £18.75 million. It's only a little bit less than what we originally paid for him. And the reason why we needed to get rid of him 
and Omar Niasi, who's still at the club currently. But the reason why is because we are buying a new striker and hopefully the deal is going to be done fairly quickly. We also played a pre-season friendly against Bromby and drew 1-1 where Tosin scored. Let's go forward a bit more. Hopefully the next bit of news is the big summer signing. The big summer signing is here. It's not the big summer signing that I'm actually looking forward to, but we've also gone and brought Fabio Contral on a free transfer. Apparently he was at Rio Ave last season. Basically, decent option, but he's coming as a regular starter. Might not be a regular starter because we've got old Lucas um, Diggles. It's going to be our main left back, but he gives us an option in multiple positions across the pitch. Also, he's only 31. I thought he was a bit older than that. Okay, now the big transfer has happened. Our transfer budget is now down to £4.7 million. It was as high as £20 million after selling Tosin. It's gone. We've wiped most of it out. We have signed ourselves a new striker, a Venezuelan striker from the MLS. It is Joseph Martinez, the 26-year-old who, since joining Atlanta, he's only been there two years apparently, has been on fire. 59 goals in 72 appearances apparently. I thought... We need this kind of player in our life. We've brought him in. Joseph Martinez, Moise Keane. We've still got Niasse. We've also got Iwobi, Rashalison. We've got Bernard. We've got some extremely good attacking options now. We're probably a bit top heavy. We're going to just have to deal with it. More days have passed and more transfers have now taken place. We've brought in one more player into our club. We've got rid of a number of players on loan. I realised I haven't actually gone through the players we've left on loan. We're going to do that now quickly. First up, this guy, Nathan Markello, has left the club signing for Blackburn. I didn't sell him. My uh, youth development guy did. Cuco Martina has gone out on loan to Hull for the season. He's not very good. Benny Banningheim, maybe, has gone out on loan to Coventry for the season. He is very good, but needs to get some football behind him. Anthony Evans has gone out on loan to Southend. Lewis Gibson has gone out on loan to Wickham. Anthony Gordon going out on loan to Bradford City. Matty Folds going out on loan to Cambridge. And the big one, because no bugger wanted to buy him, Umar Niasi has gone out on loan to Malaga. They're paying half of his wages, which is better than them paying none of his wages. Joining the club then, on a loan deal for the moment, it might extend to a permanent deal if he does well, is Denis Vavro, the 23-year-old Slovakian central defender with three caps to his name, has joined on loan from Lazio. He joined Lazio and then they've immediately loaned him out, which I'm fine with because I think he's a good option. He's not going to be the first name on the team sheet by all means, but he's definitely going to be in and around there, maybe sitting on the bench, possibly playing a few games as and when we need him. Apparently, we've also signed Tyrrell Warren. Um, I didn't do this. Head of youth development. So, transfer window is still open. There's still a number of days left of this. Obviously, it shuts just before the season actually begins. Our first match of the season is going to be up against Norwich. That will be in the next episode. We are going to end this episode here. I don't think there's going to be any, be any more transfer business. I can't say that for certain because I often decide, oh, let's just spaff £10 million on this player on a whim. But I think this is all we're going to do. If I'm honest, we've overspent on Joseph Martinez, but then again, if I'm honest, we also overspent on Alex Iwobi, and I didn't do that one. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back next time with the first match of the season up against Norwich. <laughs>